Hello and welcome once again to my bar. Uh, I'm my name is Ansel Birch. I'm the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Uh, as you can see, I have gone to a new location, an entirely new place. That's right. Um, in fact, uh, oh, here, just uh, let me. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, looks like uh, some idiot lost the portal to the bar I was at, and now I'm in a field outside of whatever castle that is. Hopefully they're nice, because uh, I'm probably going to have to stay there tonight. But um, luckily, I've got all my bar supplies here, so I think we're going to be okay somehow. Uh, and hopefully I'll find a, a bar to be in for our last live stream next week. I know, such storyline, such continuity we have here. Uh, I'm so glad that you're all present for it. Uh, Patty Smiths, I'm glad to hear that you're you're coming in from the smartest that's speakeasy. Uh, that's that's very encouraging to hear. Uh, in 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 keeping with with our importance of continuity on this show, uh, it's uh, you know I'm I'm kind of curious if if anybody has any thoughts about where I should go next. Uh, if I should go back to that same bar, if I can find my way back to that same bar, or if for this final show if I should do something different. So reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the places uh, you can find me as Dungeon Barkeep or Indecisionist or The Indecisionist. I try to make it pretty easy. But none of you came here to hear me promote my social media platforms, which I somehow reach from this collection of booze in the middle of a field. No, you came here to find out what today's cocktail is, and I am here to oblige, because once again, I am the Dungeon Barkeep, and we're here to make a brand new cocktail, brand new nerdy cocktail, unlike any cocktail ever made before, and uh, to live up to that, I am going to have to roll some dice, use some tables, and uh, I'm going to have to be brave enough to drink whatever comes out of all of that alchemy. Uh, so, what do you say we go ahead and get started? The first thing I need to roll tonight is a D4, and that is going to select our essential mixer from our essential mixers table. So here we are. Uh, there's a D4. There's the essential mixers table. Uh, and I was just thinking, gosh, I've I haven't used grenadine in ages. So let's see if let's see if we can get. Hey, hey, okay. I don't know how I managed that, but ask and ye shall receive. That's that's a two for grenadine. Uh, next up is the garnish list with a D6. Six on that, so bitters. Grenadine and bitters, we're getting dangerously close to a cocktail someone might drink on purpose. Uh, now for our less essential mixers, I've got a D8 here. That's a seven. So we're using Bloody Mary mix. All right, so this is actually a great opportunity to talk about to the Bloody Mary mix. This will be the last ride of this Saucy Wench Bloody Mary mix. Um, Unless my dear friends at Saucy Wench uh, are able to hook me up with some more uh, soon. Uh, luckily, they're in town for the Bristol Renaissance Fair. So I, I should reach out to them because I'm I, sure I can get somebody to pick some up for me. Uh, so, you know, like the people who work at the shop and are very fabulous, who I know personally and think are great. If you go to the Bristol Renaissance Fair and you check out the Saucy Wench booth, tell them, tell them the Dungeon Bar Keep sent you. They'll know what you're talking about. All right, plugs out of the way. We're going to do Bloody Mary Mix, Grenadine, and Bitters. This is going to be real gross, but that's what you came for, probably. So what's the liquor in this Nightmare Cocktail? One way to find out, that's to roll this D10. That's another seven. Brandy! Yeah, that's what you put in that mix of weird crap. Brandy. Ugh, okay, and... Clearly, with all of the weirdness that I've just done, what you're all thinking is, gosh, I wish this guy would try to teach me something very vague about barkeeping. So let's let's see what today's bar term is. Five, dry. Okay, I actually learned something about this recently, thanks to uh, Greg over at How to Drink. Uh, and he was talking about how dry uh, originally was a term that uh, referred to the type of gin that you were getting because... Gins weren't typed the way that they are now, where you could say like, oh, well, I know that brand and it's going to be dry or, you know, where it's it's written right on the label that, OK, this is a dry gin. That's a, you know, whatever you had to say to the barkeep, I would like a dry gin in my martini or whatever you're drinking. Um, 
and uh, at the time, vermouth was much more heavily applied in those in those cocktails, specifically martinis, because that's obviously where we hear the term dry more most often. Um, nowadays, a dry martini is usually referring to not having very much vermouth in it or, or cutting back on the vermouth amount. Um, but uh, that's a fun little historical thing that I learned from Greg over at How to Drink. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting that, that it's all about, you know, changes in standards and bottling and labeling, uh, that now dry means something new, but yeah, so, uh, we're not using vermouth in today's drink, so I'm not going to be able to apply that, uh, fun fact to it, but, um, now we all know. And as I've learned from some very combative people, that's half the battle. All right, that takes us to our final roll for the night. We have to pick a name. Uh, I have this list of 20 names. This is culled from a bunch of different names that were submitted to me online by people just like you, people on, on the social medias that I referred to earlier, as well as people on my website, indecisionist.com slash Dungeon Barkeep, which is linked in the doobly-doo down below. How convenient. It's like somebody put it there just for you. Spoilers, it was me, and yes, I did. We're going to roll on this chart and pick today's uh, name. Uh, like I said, this is picked at random from the names that are submitted that uh, go into this larger chart. Uh, so every week there's a different list of names. Names, And today's is 19, a skill check. That's appropriate. All right. So we're going to do a skill check today. Uh, the skill being, can I make a cocktail out of these ingredients that isn't gross? I think this is a DC 20 skill check, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but let's find out. Let's hop over to the bar top cam and see how it goes. All right. Ooh, ah, here we are, the bar top. Uh, let's see. We've got grenadine, Bloody Mary mix, bitters, and brandy. This feels like a build in the build in the glass kind of cocktail. So we're going to do just that. So here we are. There's a glass. It does sound terrifying, Patty Smith. You're absolutely right. Uh, it is worth mentioning this is spicy Bloody Mary mix. They do make uh, a non-spicy version. So when I comment on how spicy it is later, you'll know that that's uh, a choice that I made and not something you're necessarily going to get from uh, Saucy Wench every time. I am going to go ahead and do a full two ounce pour of brandy on this because I have a feeling that the brandy is going to be the saving grace of this weird mix of things. Um, brandy is quite sweet, generally speaking, so it's going to have to fight against the bitters and the Bloody Mary mix in order to make any kind of impact whatsoever. Um... I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Yeah, sorry for that. Okay. Let's see. I want to go with something that's going to complement the, um, the brandy in this. So I think I'm going to go with a sweeter bitters. I've got this molasses bitters from Bitter Cube. Uh, let's do the thing. There we go. Ooh. So let's see um, if I can get that in there. There we go. I don't usually do labels on this show, but um, this is pretty unique stuff. And if you can find it, I recommend it. I really, really like it. All right. So there we go. We're going to use the molasses bitters from Bitter Cube. Uh, I would say any kind of sweet bitters is probably going to do it for that. Okay. Grenadine. That's also quite sweet. Uh, I'm actually not using grenadine. I'm using a pomegranate syrup, um, which is actually, I think, more delicious than grenadine. It was turned. I was turned on to it by a friend, and uh, they were right. They were right in saying that I should do this. Oh, man. I think I'm going to go easy on the grenadine in hopes that it doesn't get in too much of a fight with the Bloody Mary mix. So we're just going to do... We're going to do about three quarters of an ounce of, of pomegranate syrup. What can I say about this drink? Well, it's going to be red. 
That's for sure. Okay, so there's that. And now, the resistant piece, the saucy wench, Queen Mary, spicy drink mixer. Oh, that's really gross looking. Okay. Let's all just appreciate how disgusting that looks. Yep. Yep. It's like an alien world in there. Um, I wish you could see it more. There's like this this striation of of brandy where it hasn't mixed at all with the Bloody Mary mix. Uh, luckily, that's what spoons are for. So go ahead and get that closer to homogeny. So by virtue of this being the last of that bottle, this is probably a half and half brandy to, well, I guess everything to Bloody Mary mix. Um, so I have, I'm suspecting that the, the sweet elements are going to be almost equal to the tomato-y, herby elements of the Bloody Mary mix, and the spice is going to be present as well as a sort of outlier. That's going to be my guess, but let's see back on the standard cam. Okay, so here we are in the view of this beautiful castle. Slancha. Okay. This one comes in waves. Uh ow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um Initially it's very sweet. Then you get a big whack of pomegranate. Then you get the spice from the Bloody Mary mix. As suspected, the Bloody Mary mix is really fighting for its place in all of this. And um, almost like the, the, the sort of density that you're seeing here, where, well, I guess you can't really, can't see it anymore now that I stirred it. But uh, that same striation that we were seeing, it kind of plays out that way on the palette. Um, Ah. Ah. <coughs> Brandy covers a number of sins, as any good Wisconsinite can probably tell you. Ah. Uh, and so that brandy is right up front, which is which is weird, because usually I think of brandy as being kind of submissive um in a cocktail context. Usually usually brandy kind of takes a back seat, but um I think because it's being buoyed by the pomegranate, there's like this, it's aggressive sweetness right up front. It's saying like, I, ah, uh, pay attention. Um, and somehow that is overwhelming all of the celery, tomato-y, like salsa-y notes of, of the Bloody Mary mix, which, um, I mean, there might be a universe in which this is a thing you would drink on purpose. I don't know what it would be. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what kind of adventure does this take me on? Um, I'm I'm thinking that this um, cocktail, it is legally a cocktail. Uh, I think this cocktail takes us on on an adventure that is, I mean, honestly, the one of my favorite kinds of adventure one that starts off really sweet and fun and, and adventurous and cute uh and then slowly gets stranger and darker as it goes and by the end of it you've you know you've you've gotten yourself into a situation where you're you know uh, in a fight with a demigod or something and um you know i i really like that sort of thing so i think i think if i were to pair this with an adventure i would start off in a um let's say like a like a forest village of of like very earthy druidic people 
and our party starts off as uh as members of this this like um yeah forest community this this arboreal community maybe they're really good at like climbing trees and and they're they're really in touch with with the the cycles of the forest around them and then as uh as the story goes on you know we discover that something is something is amiss something is is taking animals from the forest or or killing the trees there's a blight uh and the the gods of the forest the spirits um uh, make clear that they are facing an existential threat and that these people who have been hosted by the forest's energy all this time uh, are needed to save the ecosystem that they both exist in. And uh, so these adventurers are chosen from the from the community. Uh, some of them probably from outside the community. Some of them are probably originally from outside the community, which makes them that much more um, likely to be adventurers, um, usually. And uh, yeah, I think I think this is the sort of thing that ends with with fighting a god or a, or a you know great um, malevolent being of of some sort like that. Uh, you can see it separating again. Uh, the two things just don't want to uh, to be a part of the same whole. Uh, so yeah, so I guess um, if you're familiar with the campaign setting Humblewood. Um, that's one that really brings you in with the cute sweetness and then really takes it dark really fast. Um, so I would say pair this with a Humblewood game and drink adventurously, friends. I didn't do plugs, so I'm going to do that real quick. <clears throat> Uh, Signups opened up for TTRPG Pickup Con this weekend. There are still spaces in many games across many different systems. So check out ttrpgpickupcon.com to sign up for games and figure and uh, take a look at the schedule to see what games we're playing. Other than that, I don't have a lot to plug. Tomorrow I'm playing on the Litching Hour Twitch channel. Uh, with part of our uh, ongoing Swashbucklers live stream. This will be the first one in a while, so head on over to the Litching Hour at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, and then coming up at the end of the month is the Starlight Radio Dreams uh, show, um, Streamed Heat. Uh, I'm particularly proud of the work that I've done this month and that the whole team has done, so check that out. Uh, and it will kick off the weekend of TTRPG Pickup Con. So I've got a lot coming up in the next few weeks. Keep an eye on the website and the social handles, and I will see you out there. Now, for real, because I have to do this again, drink adventurously. Oh, why? Are you not entertained?